the season to be jolly as the countdown to Christmas and the end of 2016 has officially begun. This week we take you to Crown Point to explore Crusoe's holiday apartments. As usual, it's been a pretty busy week for stories and we're going to show you what we have lined up for this show. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts right now. Bonacord Government Boys Under-15 National Football Champions. Highlights from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Town Meeting and later, music, play, learn. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. I'm Newton George and I'm a tour guide specializing in bird watching. I really got into this thing to my dad who was a Arden birder and he was the custodian of Little Tobago. I started to do bird watching now as a career because of my love for these birds. And it has taken me to Africa, to Brazil, to Germany, to India. Bird watching is a part of the tourism industry and tourism is all our eating. Welcome to Crusoe's Holiday Apartments. Now this vacation spot is family owned. The two-story building is surrounded with lush flower gardens in a very cozy setting. Now this, our lead story has details of a group of young men who emerged victorious in the boys under 15 national football tournament. Omar Dara Mills fills us in with this very exciting report. The boys and girls of the Bonacord Government Primary School's football teams are passionate about the sport. But it's not just enthusiasm and talent that brought the under-15 teams to their second straight finals in the Atlantic National Primary School Football League, where the boys retained their trophy. We've been looking over this, these kids on a weekend, on any opportunity to play football, any visiting team come from Trinidad, anywhere in the world come. We try to put a team from Bonacourt government that match the age group. So this is our... This is our um, our vehicle for um, success, we think. Head coach Ronald Koo says it's the work off the field that has allowed the school to be successful in recent seasons. Bonacol Government School is blessed to have a very strong support structure. Um, so starting with the commitment from the principal, the vice principal, um, the commitment from the players, and of course we have a strong technical team. The boys beat Enterprise Government Primary of Trinidad 2-0 to lift the title again. The players gave their assessments of the game. During the game, I was very eager to score a goal, and I'm happy I scored one. I felt proud because we won. I think we should have looked better. We suffered proud, miss. Miss because last year we last year we miss, and this year we again. Miss, I'm making big proud, and the school proud. Principal of the school, Ms. Desma Frank, says she was delighted with her students' performances this season. Well, I feel very proud. I feel ecstatic. But however it was expected, because of the kind of coaching that they had and because of the kind of showing that they would have put on, they were well coached and so on, they were well trained, they were well disciplined in their football. So I really expected that. The school is already planning for the next season, which they hope will be even more successful. I'm Omadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The family has been involved in the tourism industry for quite some time. They saw a need for an improved type of accommodation in Tobago and felt inspired to build Crusoe's Holiday Apartments, a vacation home for local, regional and international visitors. Listen up. Young Tobagonians were honored for their contributions to the island's development throughout the year. Caroline Wallace has highlights. The Youth Awards recognizes young Tobagonians for their contributions in various sectors over the year. And in 2016, another outstanding crop of young people were honored. Taking home the award for the category of education was Abini Taylor. Jared Balfour was awarded for performing arts. Donnie Vincent, entrepreneurship. Davlan Braffitt Agriculture, and Melanie Roberts Youth Service. The youth leader of 2016 is Rianne Moore. Musha Ramsey was named as the top youth in media. 
In the category of Health and Wellness, Shaquille Mitchell was awarded. Zorisha Hackett is the Youth Mentor 2016. And for overcoming all obstacles successfully, Chantel Hamilton and Alia Holder walked away with the Youth Triumph Award. Most Improved Youth Organization is No Behavior Crew, while the Meeting Place was hailed as being the most effective youth program. And finally, the most outstanding youth organization is Roxborough Police Youth Club. I want to, of course, um, extend congratulations to all our nominees um, for tonight, for this evening's awards. I want to wish you um, best of luck. Um, your, the fact that you were nominated suggested that, um, and that you were shortlisted suggested that you have been recognized as making a contribution to, to your community. At the end of the formal aspect of the event, the winners and the nominees were entertained by other young people. I hope that you will. Did you ever make it out of that town where nothing ever happens? It's no secret that the both of us are running out of time. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk to People. Crusoe's holiday apartments reflects a contemporary style and was constructed in 1999 by David Raphael for visitors to have a place to relax and enjoy the beauty of this island. Now we all know HIV AIDS is a deadly disease that has no boundaries. That's why HIV education is a new subject adopted by the guidance counselors in this special primary school. Have a look at this story. No turning, no touching, no kissing, no judging. HIV is no joke. And the, and the world is no, 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 no. no. The HIV AIDS caravan isn't just teaching primary school students a song. This play is a part of the presentation to educate children on HIV, how it's transmitted, and how the virus affects the body. The caravan also taught the young ones why they shouldn't stigmatize people living with HIV. We know that there are children in the primary schools who are HIV positive. So we wanted to avoid um, discrimination in the schools, all right? Because you know, the children may not know officially, but sometimes from their community, from their friends, they know that this person has HIV. So we wanted to prevent discrimination. The HIV AIDS caravan was carried out in 14 schools around Tobago by the Student Support Services Unit. That's under the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. Now it's also hoped that the caravan will help students report cases of abuse. Um, children are being abused in the home and it's not always easy to get them to talk about what they are going through. So we try to be a little bit strategic. If we could get them to understand that here was, if you are being abused, this could affect your health, that they would come forward and report bad touches or incidents um, of abuse. And the children were eager to show off what they learned. I remember HIV is not spread by like sharing with your friends and that kind of thing. It's not spread by like that. And it's spread from some picture and get it from birth. I learned that you shouldn't scorn other people even if they are HIV. Now this HIV AIDS caravan was done as a pilot project in commemoration of World AIDS Day. That's celebrated on December 1st. It's hoped that more schools will be included when the project gets on the way next year. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. On the other side of the break, the library retells 17th century war. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us.
My name is Cloy Williams. I'm a maxi taxi operator for over 25 years and I'm involved in tourism. It's a beautiful industry and tourism helps me financially. It helps me my family, it takes care of my church, it takes me all over the world and it's helped me meet people. And let me tell you something, at the end of it, tourism is all a we take. Thank you for staying with us. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Now, Crusoe's Holiday Apartments is in close proximity to the a &R Robinson International Airport, local dining places, and a few of the best beaches on the island. Now we take you to the Canby Mount Pleasant community, where the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service facilitated its monthly town meeting. Here are the details in this report. The residents of Canby Mount Pleasant want more police patrols in their district. It was the main item on their wish list at the latest town meeting hosted by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Some parts of the area are affected by criminal activity, so this resident is calling for functional CCTV cameras. And I also want to find out if they are strategically placed to assist the police in solving crimes. I say this against the background that I feel sad that sometimes my community is deemed a hot spot. Notwithstanding, we have the hot spot a zone that came into being some time after. Majority of those hot spot zones does not have cameras, but we have cameras at strategic place, maybe outside those hot spot zones. So when we have those other cameras, those hot spot zones, we will assure you that some of those will be given attention. Lighting on one of the minor streets is also an issue for the residents. I would like to make a plea and a plug for a street light. Well, we are here at the center, and so we're going towards the um, recreation ground. Local road on the right. As we turn to local road on the right, there's a sort of alleyway, that first other side street. There, I am recommending that we have a street light placed there because lots of nefarious activities take place at nights there. I'm personally going to deal with the issue of, of the light, but what I will do, I will have to come to the area to see. But there weren't only grievances. The residents also praised the TTPS for its service. Just over a week ago, I have a sister-in-law who fell to a man pointing a gun into her neck and take all her jewelry. And I must recommend the police for capturing the individual and them. The hope is that the town meetings will create closer collaboration between the public and police officers. This was the last town meeting for 2016. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. This property was a part of the Clapham Estate, which back in the day was a known coconut estate before being passed on to the family which owns the property now. Picture this, staff of the Scarborough Library facility dressed in authentic Dutch war uniforms to give tours of their exhibition in commemoration of Tobago Day. Check out this next report. Tobagonians and visitors had the chance to travel back in time to board the horse the Kronigan, a Dutch ship built in 1674. It was involved in the 1677 naval battle for Tobago between the Netherlands and France. But there's no actual gunfire this time. It was just one of the activities hosted by the Scarborough Library facility to commemorate Tobago Day. Visitors learned about some of the artifacts from the shipwreck. They are finds from the Rockley Bay Archaeological Project. Well, what we are trying to bring to the fore is that Tobago has a very long and colored history. This battle is one of the fiercest battles that have ever been fought, uh, has ever been fought not only in the region, but for, for that time period in the world. And it's very important that students, but, and particularly Tobagonians, understand the historical significance of the artifacts and of the people who lived here before. Hundreds died in the battle, including slaves. Professors and graduate students of the University of Connecticut have catalogued pipes, cutlery, and cannons. They also found several jars from the battle that took place over 300 years ago. 
we have presented, um, we have decided to present information to the public in a different way. So instead of the, the flat visuals, we decided to do a, a, a three-dimensional um, exhibit. And we hope that by doing that way, we're able to interest persons and stir up um, um, in the community and interest in the, the artifacts and the fact that this, this, this aspect of our history could be part of the tourism product. During the tour, guests viewed some of the documentary work on the 1677 battle. But the learning doesn't have to end with the tour. There's more to discover about the battle and the archaeological project at www.shipwrecks.com. It's an exciting experience for many of those who toured the exhibition. I think it's an excellent way to communicate the importance of our marine archaeology. I want to compliment Dr. Guy and the library for mounting such an exhibition. I think it's, to my mind, it will be one of the highlights of the season, this time of the year. I found the artifacts were really gorgeous because I never thought that Trinidad and Tobago would have this stuff because when you go away, I see them in museums. I was always wonder why Trinidad and Tobago never has these things and now I find out that we do right outside. The other Tobago libraries are also celebrating Tobago Day. The Charlotteville and the Roxborough branch libraries both had copies of Tobago slave registers on display. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. What about the property keeps guests coming back is its proximity to the conveniences of the island, the atmosphere and the friendliness of the staff. Now the Tobago Day celebrations have officially begun and the first two events involved the participation of students and the general public. Crystal George has the details in this report. Take a look. Tobago Day is celebrated on December 4th. But before the main day, Tobagonians and visitors are welcome to participate in a week of activities that promote an understanding of the island and its history. The occasion also commemorates Tobago's journey to economic, cultural and social advancement. The contribution of outstanding Tobagonians are also highlighted. But before things got into full swing, it was time to give thanks. The Shaw Park Complex hosted a praise and worship concert, sung the trumpet. Song, dance, and drama, they did it all. People from all areas of the island came together to celebrate the achievements of the island at the Shaw Park Cultural Complex, but it didn't end there. Special guest artists Joel Positive Murray and Killen Whitlock made a special performance and ended the night on a peaceful note. We come to just raise up Jesus higher and higher and higher and higher in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come to sing praises. We come to sing hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. I say. I miss how we serve a mighty God, I say. Mighty, 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 mighty. I said, Luma is mighty. Oh. And imagine the sickness in my body. See, we serve a mighty God. Mighty, mighty, mighty. The Tobago Day cultural explosion featured performances from students of various preschools, primary schools, and secondary schools across the island. These performances were not limited to monologues, speech bands, and spoken word pieces. The Tobago Day activities also include the Tobago Wonders Challenge, a business expo, and the Tobago Day Interdivisional Football Tournament. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up, music, play, learn. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. I'm Newton George, and I'm a tour guide specializing in bird watching. I really got into this thing too. My dad who was a Arden birder and he was the custodian of Little Tobago. I started to do bird watching now as a career because of my love for these birds. And it has taken me to Africa, to Brazil, to Germany, to India. Bird watching is a part of the tourism industry and tourism is all our eating.
I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old. And I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Storbay Beach Facility and tourism is all we take. Welcome back. We're exploring Crusoe's holiday apartments. Now this property has 12 bedrooms. Four of them are two bedroom units, while the other eight are single rooms and sleeps two people very comfortably. Music, play, learn. In this next report, you learn of a positive initiative geared towards promoting the holistic development of our students. Kern Freitas has the details. Music, play, learn. That's the name of a new community initiative launched by the Citizen Security Program at the Bonaccord Primary School. It's meant to promote holistic development of students at the school. The aim is to help the youngsters adopt critical social skills. These games will allow pupils to sit and play and even learn important lessons through constructive play. Their critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, positive interaction with peers and other social attitudes will be developed. This will engender our pupils to function effectively in their home, school and in the wider society. The initiative was conceived from a series of workshops hosted by the Citizens Security Program. We have done this in order to bring back something to society because a lot of respect and love and appreciation is leaving and we're seeing it with the amount of crime that is taking over. So I'm proud of the Citizen Security Program for bringing on this initiative. Music is a universal language and is proven to aid learning. That's why it's also a component of this new program. The initiative is a pilot project for education, for youth affairs, for sports, as well as for the community of Canaan Bonacord, Compoint, Canobie. And um, it's the only one in Tobago, and to me that makes it really, really special and for us to be the first to get it. And I hope that um, with more help and through more sponsors that it will be able to move throughout other schools in Tobago. The project was supported by the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus as part of its outreach and leadership training program. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The name of the property is reflected in the pool. If bored, then jump right in and have a splash with family and friends. The staff here at Cusos is willing to do everything to make your stay here a very memorable one. Song, spoken word, steel pan. These are some of the performances done to commemorate Black History Month. In this next report, we have details of the various events that took place to celebrate this historic event. Here's more. You can't doubt me. Facts is history. All time people would know how we come to be so. Beyond the performances from artists such as Leslie Ann Ellis and the Super Blue. The communities of Bethel Montgomery and Canby Mount Pleasant were filled with the rhythms of dance. and music and the songs it was done in celebration of black history month now one of the major objectives this year was to increase community participation when you talk about black consciousness, which is what um, the sanction of this Black History Month was about based on the 1940s declaration for Trinidad and Tobago, it does not mean African. It means black people as a whole. 
we don't matter where you are in the world. So that kind of awareness, that kind of community involvement, that kind of documenting what people think and what they want to know, what they want to see, it is very important for us. The Division of Community Development and Culture's Black History Month celebrations began four years ago. The occasion was seen as a way to help the younger generations connect to their heritage. Celebrating excellence, that is what it was about. Letting us, letting young people see that, um, yes, proud to be black. Yeah? Because so many, as you know, in those discussions, they will talk a lot about the history. People in history would have done a lot of things and that kind of stuff. So it's about letting you know your history. So that if you know your history is a, it's a platform, they also say, looking back, Right, going looking back to move forward. The Sankofa process is always in effect if you want to be successful. And therefore it is important for us to know where we come from. It's also an opportunity to highlight the island's talented cultural performers. Also, again, the industry creating platforms. If we train out so many people in the arts. So you continue to create platforms for showcase to these persons, right? Because that is our job. The division also hosted an awards ceremony to highlight outstanding achievements of Tobagonians over the past year. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's have your say time and our question this week is, what can we do to reduce incidents of bullying? While you think about it, let's take a look at who had their say this week. Make sure nobody not fighting in the school. Send them to the principal if anything happen. I will go and tell my teacher, my mommy, put up a sign that to stop fighting and bully people, right? And and I'll tell you was bullying somebody, say sorry to them. Find different ways to allow children to work together. Probably group, different group activities or even have various demonstrations where they would have to answer questions based on whatever activity we're doing in the class. Tell the principal and tell the teachers. Then stop bullying, to say sorry and no fight again. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a very safe and productive week. We close now with a montage of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Yoga. We hope you enjoy.